In this video we are using Substance 3D Designer to create some nice liquid splatters. Let's go over the key notes and parameters we'll use first. The multi-directional warp node is a great node to warp shapes in an interesting way. It distorts your shape in a few set directions based on an intensity input. Warp angle is used to adjust the warp directions. With mode I have control over the blending behavior. Average is more of a soft distortion, max extends, min eats away, and chain easily gives you a really intense distortion. Edge detect node detects high contrast areas in a black and white image and creates edges around these. Edge width is the thickness of the edge. Edge roundness rounds sharp corners. A non-uniform blur grayscale node is a high quality blur where the intensity is driven by a custom input mask. Intensity is the maximum strength of the blur. It's masked by the blur map. The amount of samples determines the quality of the blur. Blades are the amount of sampling sectors. Let's build this splatter setup together, which you can use as starting point for more complex ones. As start we use a crystal 2 node with a scale of 2. Let's connect it to a transformation 2D node to stretch it 350% in height to have a nice stretched pattern. Then we continue with a Cartesian to polar node to make it circular, followed by a normal node with an intensity of 15. This is the base of the vector map. That it works perfect we use a transformation 2D node and rotate it 90 degrees. For the base shape we add a shape node with the disc pattern and a scale of 0.15. Let's continue with a vector warp grayscale node and connect the transformation 2D to the vector map input to get the base splatter. We connect it to a blur HQ grayscale node with an intensity of 0.75 to get smoother shapes and forward it to a threshold node. This results in a bit less detailed but smoother splatter. Let's join it to the background of a blend node and switch the mode to add linear dodge. As base for deformation, we add a Perlin noise with a scale of 24. For the inner area, we connect the shape node to a multidirectional warp, use the Perlin as intensity input, increase the intensity to 15 and choose chain as mode for a nice deformation. Then we use it as foreground input. Finally, we take a non-uniform blur grayscale node with an intensity of 2 and increase the samples and blades to 7 for a higher quality height map. Here's our final base splatter result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. Let's explore a more detailed splatter version. The handles of the transformation 2D nodes are perfect to give some directionality to the splatter. I really like to play around with it. For some bigger splatter details I use a vector morph grayscale node and take the same vector map input. With another blur HQ and threshold node I now have individual control for the bigger and smaller splatter details. This helps to customize the splatter better. The amount value of the vector morph and warp nodes is great to tweak the shapes individually too. With this transformation 2D node I have control over the size and proportions of the inner splatter area. And with the individual modes and intensity of the multidirectional warp node I deform the inner area. You can use here also other noises as input and experiment with it. To deform the overall splatter slightly I take a warp node with a bigger scaled Perlin noise node. The threshold node is needed for a high contrast shape because the non-uniform blur node can give unwanted results when the input has also grey values. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.